As the world marks World Suicide Prevention Day, Unguvu change leader Aisha Buba has stressed the need for Nigeria to decriminalize suicide attempts in the country. Now, suicide is currently illegal in Nigeria, and those who survive the attempt face the possibility of legal punishment. Now, some have said criminalizing suicide will not prevent it. Instead, it will punish the most vulnerable in the society. According to the World Health Organization, one million people intentionally take their own lives every year, which translates to one suicide death every 40 seconds. Furthermore, attempted suicide is 20 times more prevalent, so 20 million attempted suicides occur every year. And now joining us to further discuss this on the news is Aisha Buba, Nguvu Change Leader. Thank you so much, Aisha, for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, Aisha, this is an alarming statistics. And of course, we know that in this part of the world, um, attempted suicide is illegal. And these calls to decriminalize suicide attempt is not a position that is supported by everyone. Now, some people will feel that it, it gives impetus to those people since there is no consequence uh, for their actions, regardless of the fact that the other people that they, they intend to leave behind will suffer the consequences of these actions. Do you agree with that view? I'm sorry, please, can you come again? All right, so basically I'm saying that, um, you know, there, there are calls, especially um, by you and your, your team, to decriminalize suicide attempts. And I'm sure that there's so many other people who are in support, but some other people would argue against that. You know, some would say that it's like giving them impetus to um, commit the crime when, when they do it and they feel they would want to do it again, regardless of who they're leaving behind to suffer the consequences. So do you agree that um, they should not or they should be criminalized for attempting that? Or what is your take on it? Um, so I do not agree that criminalizing discourages anyone because if you look at it, we still have a high suicide rate. Um, like you already um, highlighted, every 40 seconds, someone in the world dies by suicide. Nigeria is not left behind. Almost every other day in the news, you're reading about suicide cases. So clearly criminalizing it doesn't reduce or change anything. If anything, it makes it worse. Because what criminalizing it does is it means if, if you attempt suicide, you have to succeed. So there are no criminal charges against you. So this, this means that we would see high cases of suicide because whoever attempts suicide would want to ensure that they see through it till the end to avoid any criminal charges, as opposed to extending a hand of support to the person, a hand of care that can help them overcome whatever difficulties that they are going through. So I think it does the opposite. If you are criminalizing it, anyone who has suicidal thoughts and makes an attempt will ensure that they see to the end of it. All right, uh, Aisha, before it even degenerates into the attempt to commit suicide, successful or not, what are some of the common warning signs that someone may be at risk of suicide? And, um, you know, this is a societal challenge now. How can we as a society encourage them to seek help? Um, so some of the warning signs of suicide um, that we can see, sometimes they are not evident until the action has happened, but sometimes they are very much present. Um, you find that the person is talking a lot about death. They are so much, their thought is preoccupied with the thoughts of death. They are constantly thinking about dying, even in their conversations. It's always talking about death. Um, sometimes you find the person is giving out their, their most prized possessions. So whatever it is that they hold of value, material things, you see them giving them out. And it's definitely looking out of place because this person is clearly preparing for something, right? Or you find the person engaging in risky behavior. So in situations where the person doesn't have the courage to carry out the act, or maybe for some moral reasons, like maybe religious um, teachings, they, they do not want to do it themselves. You find them engaging in risky behaviors, like you find the person crossing the road without checking, hoping that they can run them over, you know, um, but most importantly, the most, the biggest sign is where the person also mentions it, where the person mentions that they want to die, they don't want to go on anymore, they feel hopeless, right? But in some situations, it doesn't happen like that. And the best ways that you can support such an individual is first and foremost, we need to do away with the judgmentality. We need to stop judging and criticizing people because speaking up is an act of courage. Many people don't speak up. So for the fact that someone is speaking up, it means they need help. 
that is what you should be leaning towards providing them, asking the person, how can I help you? How can I support you? How can we get you out of this difficult um, dark phase that you're going through? Try to research available mental health services within your vicinity or close by or something you can leverage online that the person can access. These are some few ways that you can also provide support as an individual. All right. Uh, I mean, from the statistics that we earlier read, it shows that suicide is not an uncommon phenomenon. But then some people still believe that it's it's something that is far-fetched. You know, you hear a lot of people say that, oh, it, it can't come near me, it can't come near my family member, when in fact somebody in, in, in most families is either going through suicidal thoughts or getting to the verge or the edge, uh, or almost edge of depression. So um, the, the part of... Uh, stigmatization is one thing that we need to look into. But um, that aside, what are some evidence-based treatment or therapies for individuals who have attempted suicide or are going through depression or experiencing suicidal ideation? I know um, that a lot of times we hear them say that they give some people who are going through depression sleeping pills, for example. But is that sustainable? And are there any other uh, treatment measures available? Um, so with suicide, it's, uh, it's on its own, suicide is not a mental health condition or a disorder, right? But a lot of times it goes hand in hand with a mental health condition. Although there are other social factors like economic crisis, loss of job or something like that, that can lead one to attempt suicide. But there are also mental health conditions. So like you rightly said, if there is a history or a case of depression and it's triggering the suicidality for the individual, now in treating the depression, there are different approaches. Yes, therapy can be used. There is a popular um, technique called um, cognitive behavioral therapy that helps the person at address the negative thoughts and emotions that they are going through. Um, in severe cases, medications can also be used to manage the symptoms. Now, if someone's suicidality is triggered by a mental health condition, once there is treatment put in place for the mental health condition, the signs and symptoms of suicide is expected to drop, right? So first and foremost in addressing or treating suicide um, thoughts is to identify what the root cause could be. What is causing these suicidal thoughts? Is it a mental health condition that it needs to be treated? It needs to be focused on, or oh, if it's other social factors, what can be put in place to support the person and get them back on their feet? All right, uh, Aisha Buba, Ngovu Change Leader, thank you so much uh, for joining us and, of course, sharing your thoughts on this. And we're hoping that the society does better and, uh, you know, the government does better as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye.